Hi, I'm Jackie from the University of Adelaide and today I'm going to demonstrate to you the basic guidelines for the application of a thumb spiker splint. This splinting is usually used for patients who have suspected scaphoid fractures. So we'll pop our patient into the position which is a bit like an Indian arm wrestle. So now we've got the thumb in its neutral position and the wrist is in alignment. Slide your thumb out and just leave their hands so. You need to gather your materials next which is some cool water, bandages, some soft band and some stockingette and your plastering for splinting. So we'll apply the stockingette first. The stockingette as it goes down the arm, just goes so far down the arm. Don't take it all the way to the end just yet. We'll pull that out. We'll get the patient to straighten their fingers for us and then we pull the thumb over. Bring that back and slide it down. Just watch you don't get it too tight in this web space here. It becomes uncomfortable. So now when we get to our edges that we're going to fold over, we come back once we're ready to fold this material over and it's about three finger widths. So that's the fold that we will require. At this end, the palm of crease, we will fold down to the palm of crease. So that's the edge. So the splint will stop here and finish about here. Next we apply the little sock which will cover the thumb. And with a little bit of tape we just secure that in position. Try another one for that. Like so. We then take our padding and what we're going to do is we're going to cut a little piece of the material out just down through here. Not too long. And we'll get rid of that. So what we end up is with a shape like so. And we're going to put that in the medial part of the thumb there, in the midline, and bring that round. Take it completely around the thumb, so circumferencing the whole thumb. Bring it around the back of the hand, and then to the front of the hand. We're going to take the scissors, and then from the patient's side, we're going to cut at an angle, almost to the end of the stocking. And then wrap that around. As you can see, we need to come round twice. So every split that is a, it's a wrist splint or a below elbow cast, the padding needs to come round twice. Just bend your arm down that way a little bit, that's it. And then come down. And twice round the bottom to finish off. So that's what the arm should look like. Just check we haven't got any open areas here. Just tether some of the padding to cover if you spot any open areas. Next we take about four layers of the gypsona and we've measured this from the thumb down to the base of the thumb here, from the tip of the thumb to the base. And we've got about four layers. Next we make a cut up the middle, almost to the tip, and we pop that there. The next piece we have ten layers of this, four a um, Below elbow splint, all splints require 10 layers. We then place that over the top, so we've measured so that we have three finger widths from the bottom and then that will come up to secure on to the, the previous piece of padding and uh, template that we have. So we take this and we insert that around the thumb like so. And just smooth that down, not too tight, don't pull it too tight. that goes over the plaster and then we take the next piece and we just give it a quick dip in the water we don't want it too wet plaster usually takes a full two days to fully set so the wetter it is the longer it's going to take to set so we just make sure there's no creases and remove the excess water we then take the slab and we apply it onto the radial aspect of the arm and just smooth it down with the flat of your hands, no fingers. If you put your fingers into it all, you'll leave dents. 
and then we fold the edge up like so and that one like that for the thumb and then bring this down to the palmer crease making sure we'll just rotate this for demonstration purposes that the metacarpal heads are free so that the hand can have gentle range of movement exercises we then take our bandage and we start at the bottom here and we come round with a fairly good tension. We don't want the back slab to fall off or become too loose. It needs to support the fracture. Just be mindful to keep your fingers out of the casting material. So as we come round to the thumb, because of the size of bandage we have here, we'll just make a little cut there. And then we'll bring that around like so. Collect it up through the back. Another little cut on the angle. And bring that round. And then we'll go back down again. That will give us a sufficiency of at least two bandages that support the splint. Cut off the excess. and tape it down. So the next thing we need to do is our moulding. So we take our patient like so, and we do the biker's grip. So we get the patient to grip like so, and we're just moulding in between that web space and around the thumb. So it actually takes grip around the thumb. So just hold that for a few minutes. Like so, and then we release. Then we do some moulding just at the wrist to make sure that it is taking a grip. So just some flat moulding. Because the arm's not cylindrical, so we need to make it the shape of the arm. And just keep coming up and moulding as you're going and going down. So that is a thumb spiker back slab. The next thing we need to now check is our neurovascular status, which is we're checking that the circulation of fingers are nice and warm. You can feel all of the sensation of that and you can wriggle your fingers. And that's it.